Hey folks, welcome to Module 1, Getting Tech Ready for CU. Getting yourself ready for your learning at College Unbound can take several different forms. In this training, we're focused particularly on technology in general, and more specifically Moodle. The technical requirements you need in order to take an online course will be explained in this module as well. You'll learn how to access your college email, and how to determine if your computer is compatible with the learning, Moodle, learning environment Moodle uh, that you'll use for taking online courses, and really most of your courses at CU will use Moodle in some way. So let's get started. Once you have a college email account, you will have an email address, and that email address is your ticket to almost everything within the different College Unbound systems. So whether it is uh, accessing your email or getting into the uh, campus system known as Campus Cafe or getting into Moodle, your email account is your first place to go to. Uh, so whenever you are going to access your email, uh, one of the quickest ways you can do that is by going to gmail.com. That is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.gmail.com. When prompted, put in your full email address, that is both the username, which is usually your first and last name with a period in the middle, the at symbol, and collegeunbound.edu. Your college email is your primary means of communication within the college and with your instructors. It's important when you enroll in a course that you make sure to check it regularly, even a few times a week, especially if you're taking an online course. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting the most recent updates from both the college and your courses. Now, some faculty may use phone to text or to call, but email is still an essential part of your college experience and you should be prepared to um, use it regularly. And of course, if you know that you won't go into your college, uh, your college inbound email account often enough, we also encourage you to set up the auto forwarding system so you can receive an email at an email address you do regularly check. This week's module includes a resource on how to forward your email. Let's talk about hardware. The hardware to get up and running with your courses at CU is to have a PC or a Mac with a recent operating system and internet access. We don't advise trying to do your, your entirety of your education on a smartphone or even really a tablet. Uh, we strongly recommend to have a computer of some sort, um, such as a laptop or desktop. For some folks, internet access may not be entirely, uh, may, they may not have an, great into access to internet and we'll cover that later but ideally your device should be able to access the internet um, on a regular basis. You should also have a webcam and microphone. For some folks, again, they might not have one built into their computers and may either purchase one uh, such as a headset microphone or a, a, a plug-in webcam or make use of their smartphone when needed for things like Zoom meetings or other situations where video and audio recording is needed. Let's talk about digital skills. For College Unbound, students should develop basic computer skills in order to do as well and succeed well at College Unbound. We know that technology can be a bit scary and overwhelming for some, and yet inevitably there are technologies that you use effectively every day, whether it's a car, a machine for work, appliances at home, or a smartphone. You often are using a variety of technologies throughout your day and doing so quite effectively. So we say that because there's no reason you we have any expectation that you can't transfer some of that that understanding or stretch yourself a little bit more to get comfortable with the uh, technology that we use for teaching and learning. Ultimately, we want students to have or develop basic computer skills so that they can not only arrive to their classes, but succeed or know where to go for assistance when needed. And let's face it, we all need help when it comes to technology. It's an ever-moving target. So to do well, in a college course, you should be comfortable with some of the following computer skills. 
the ability to use a standard word processing program to create, edit, format, and save documents, as well as highlight, copy, and paste text. Uh, so this would be using things like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. The ability to use a web browser and navigate to different or various websites. The ability to find information on the web by using search engines and being able to bookmark in uh, useful websites that are relevant to you. The ability to use email, including composing, formatting, and sending email messages along with attaching documents comfortably. The ability to upload and download documents from the internet. The ability to download and install software on your phone. Uh, sorry, software on your computer, and actually, well, software or applications on your phone. The ability to manage computer files, including saving and locating files on your hard drive, a USB flash drive, or on the web in cloud storage. And included in this module is a link to a computer basics assessment that will help you determine where your strengths and challenges are with computer basics. We recommend that you take at least the first module and any others that you may find useful. Some of those useful software that we mentioned uh, include Microsoft Word or any other program that produces documents. So we, we do have Google Drive as part of our tools here at College Unbound. And so being familiar with Google Docs and you know comfortable using Google Docs is a great uh, example of a Word document pro program that you should, uh, should definitely be looking at and getting used to using. Uh, and you could also use OpenOffice, but that's entirely up to you. Adobe Reader, which is a program that reads uh, what are known as PDF files. So being comfortable having that, that software on your computer and opening up documents so that you can read it through there. Um, there's often native programs for reading PDFs within browsers or on a smartphone. But just knowing that if you're not running into those, then making sure that you get uh, a version of Adobe Reader, which is a free program online. Uh, a video player. So if you know if you're on Windows, it could be Windows Media Player. If you're on a Mac, it could be QuickTime Video. But something that will play video files on your computer, and then also making sure you keep the most updated version of whatever internet browser that you're using. Sometimes folks won't update their browser, and after a while, that can actually cause a variety of glitches in using places like Moodle or even using things like Google Docs or your accessing your email. So let's talk about word processing programs. For many of your courses, you'll be required to submit written assignments. Most major assignments, uh, such as reports and essays, are expected to be turned in as digital files. And to that end, it's important to be familiar with and have regular access to a word processing program. Now, as we mentioned, you automatically have access to Google Docs as part of uh, being part of CU, uh, but you may also have Microsoft Word or Microsoft Works, Apple Pages, or Open Office. Any one of these word processing programs is capable of handling the types of assignments you're likely to come across in your college courses. And all of them allow for you to save your written documents in different file types, because sometimes instructors might specify a particular file type. For instance, they might want you to submit it as an RTF or a DOCX or a PDF. Those sound, you know, right now they may, those may be entirely foreign terms to you, but just know with any of these programs, you'll be able to save it in that format as needed. So let's talk about web browsers. You may be familiar with or have one or more of these browsers. Um, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari, or Microsoft Edge. These are the most ideal versions or the most, these are the best browsers to have for using Moodle. There's lots of other browsers out there uh, and there's lots of other reasons why you might have other browsers, but these four are the ones that Moodle is best prepared to make to to work with. So just keep that in mind is that if you're using a different browser than these, you might run into some hiccups. Um, and that's not to say when using any of these, you might not you run into some hiccups. Um, since these are often updating, right? So each one of these regularly updates every month or two months. Uh, there may be changes that happen that cause it to, you know, a glitch or a hiccup here or there. That's perfectly normal. Uh, but ideally, these are the browsers that you are using when using Moodle and, um, you know, even accessing your, your Gmail account at College Unbound. 
All right, so I've mentioned Google and Google tools a couple different times. So I just want to highlight what are some of those Google tools that uh, we have access to. The first is Google Drive. This is an online storage. You may have heard things referred to as cloud storage or saving things in the cloud. All that means is that it is it is something that is saved online that you can easily access from every any computer that you can log into with your account. So Google Drive is this very, very large space of data that you can upload lots and lots of stuff into and be able to share it either with your instructor, with other students, or just to have there as a backup. Also within Google Drive, you have several different tools that are extremely useful uh, for the kind of work that you'll do here in uh, at College Inbound. So first and foremost, it has Google Docs. This is a document, a word processing document. So you can create reports or essays or uh, keep keep notes, whatever you want to do. This is a place where you can add lots and text, uh, lots of text for different reasons. Google Slides is actually exactly what I'm using right now, which is a presentation tool. And within, within College Unbound, you will use this probably many times to uh, demonstrate what you are learning, to demonstrate during exhibitions, lots of different things you will be using this for. Uh, around present around presenting to others and then Google Sheets if for any reason you find yourself needing um, to use something like uh, Excel or some other spreadsheet tool Google Sheets is your go-to within the uh, within the Google suite of tools and here again you may be using it for numbers I sometimes use it for lists or for organizing or for uh, keeping track of my to do's and the like so it can be used in any way that you want you can make as many documents and slides and sheets as you want uh, your the amount of space that you have uh, within the Google Drive means there's it's almost infinite you don't have to worry about running out of space all right so let's talk about access um, so we know not all students have access at their homes we know students grapple with access to to the internet in different capacities uh, the first thing is if you're having ac challenges around accessing a computer itself uh, please contact technical support and we will uh, see what can be done to make sure you actually can access a computer regularly. But beyond that, there's also the question of internet access. And we know not everybody will have internet access at home. And so we want to just highlight there are different places you can go that you can actually gain uh, internet access um, usually if not free then particularly you know relatively cheap so the first is public libraries there you know all library almost all libraries that i know of in in the air, in the country offer free public wi-fi many of them also will lend out hotspots that is portable internet access devices um, so you want to check in your area and by area i mean not just your city but in the the region or the county if there are any of the those uh, libraries that are offering hot, uh, those portable hotspots uh, and see about how you can get a hold of one. There's also lots of coffee shops and restaurants, places that you allow you to use with the Wi-Fi. Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, Panera are probably good examples. There's also public buildings, and this isn't always the case, but you can often find out. So a lot of city halls have free Wi-Fi, museums will have free Wi-Fi. Um, so keep an eye out and think about where are those places that might offer it for free. And then also in some cities and towns, uh, internet access companies provide a discount for internet access if there are school-aged children in the house. So if you have school-aged children, there may be an opportunity there for you to uh, get that discount and also be able to use the internet at a at a cheaper rate. All right. So a couple other things to think about is troubleshooting tips. So we want to provide students with as much support as we can. We also want to encourage students to think about a little bit more problem solving around when they're running into issues. Um, Sometimes when we run into technical issues, we will just want to give up. I know I certainly have been there, uh, but we we really do want to encourage you, especially when it relates to uh, using something like Moodle, using something like G, uh, the our Gmails. Really give yourself a little bit of time and try a couple things before uh, giving up. And so the first thing we always recommend is if you're trying to do something in one browser and it's not working, then switch to another. So if you're using Chrome and for some reason you can't submit something or you can't do something in Moodle, 
Try Firefox and see if you get the same result. This at least, this at least lets you know whether it's a browser issue or something else. Also, look for peripheral prompts. So sometimes if you're trying to do something on a web page, there might be some kind of prompt or warning indicator, and this may show up in the address bar. Uh, there might be an exclamation point, or there might be like a red, uh, red exclamation point with a circle or a question mark in the address bar. And so keep an eye out for those things and click on them to figure out, you know, what is going on. It's always useful to double check your internet access and make sure that it's, it is running okay. Uh, there's been plenty of times when I've tried to do something and of course my, I, my internet was off or I wasn't connected and so I couldn't do it because I wasn't connected to the internet. We also recommend if you're, you know, if, if it's seeming something that's glitchy, either closing the browser out and uh, restarting the browser or actually rebooting the computer or device from the beginning. Sometimes you do need to essentially clean the slate and go back in. And, you know, there's plenty of times that that works as an option. And then, of course, if none of that is working, we definitely want you to reach out to us. We want you to, you know, let us know what challenges you're running into. When you do reach out to us, uh, obviously you want to contact us at tech support at collegeunbound.edu. And then we want you to include as much relevant information as you can to help us figure out what's going on or to at least allow us to not have to ask a lot of questions and us go back and forth. We want to be able to help you as quickly as possible. So any information you can give us is really important. So for instance, we might ask or we might encourage you to provide us with all the with all the details to the actions that you took. In other words, what happened? How did it happen? What did you click on? Any of that information is really helpful for us. Um, if there is a if you're working within a particular page or a particular website, if you can copy that link and include it in the email, that's really helpful. If you can let us know if you're using a PC or an Apple product, or you're using a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, let us know which, which of those things that you're using so that, again, we can better figure out or start to diagnose more quickly. Also, let us know which browser you're using. Are you using Chrome or Firefox, Safari, or Edge? And then also any, any error messages that you run up against or that you encounter those you would want to send along as well. And then finally, if you can do it, a screenshot of what you are seeing. So you might take that on your computer if you know how to take a screenshot, or you may very simply, and I certainly have done this plenty of times, taken a, a picture of the screen with my camera and then send that along. So these are different things that would just, as you run into hiccups, please make sure you let us know because the, the more information we have, the more quickly we can help and figure out what's going on. And so finally, from here, this week, um, this week's activity is is actually uh, pretty simple. It is a survey tool where it will ask you some information um, about what browser you're using, what operating you, uh, system you're using, and we're doing this not necessarily because we're entire. We want to know that, but we want to make sure that you can find those answers. And then additionally, there's some support materials and, and uh, resources that will also be helpful for you. So I hope this module has been helpful. We hope there's a lot of uh, materials here that make sense and that with the additional materials, you'll feel like you're ready, uh, you're tech ready to take on CU. All right. Thank you so much.